coming up on Theater Talk. Yeah, it is weird to write something like that about this kind of play. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I would assume the guy that wrote this would punch somebody in the face. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm the show's producer, Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. And we're, we're laughing already because we have a really um, uh, charming table of very talented people tonight. There is a terrific new play on Broadway called The Mother Bleep Bleep with the Hat, uh, written by, a f <laughs> I can't even say the title, The Mother with the Hat, written by uh, Stephen Adley Geerges who has also written Jesus Top the A-Train and Our Lady of 121st Street, and we are delighted that he is joining us tonight on Theater Talk. Uh, the play also has two really terrific performances by Chris Rock, who's making his Broadway debut. Congratulations. Thank you. And welcome to Theater Talk. Oh, and a uh, really first-rate stage actor for many years here in the city, Bobby Cannavale, who is really wonderful in this play, and we're happy to have you at Theater Talk for the first time, too. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, all right, gentlemen, this is a play about... Um, young man who is trying to get sober and his relationship with his sponsor. Bobby plays the young man and Chris plays the sponsor. Stephen, what was it that got you thinking about this dynamic between the sponsor and the addict? Oh, gosh. Um, here's a really exciting answer. I, I, don't, I don't know if, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was in Chicago a couple of years ago, 4th of July, and I injured my back really badly, and I was in bed for about 10 days, and I couldn't move. And my company, Labyrinth, we go away every summer to workshop new material, and I wasn't going to be able to go. And then I was able to, like, go for, like, a day and a half, and I got up there, and I was like, I should try to write something. And just the first 20 pages kind of just poured out. And uh, I I'm not sure. You know, everything comes a little bit from life, a little bit from imagination. Uh, uh, and I guess I just was finding it. I was keep coming up against uh, how, as adults, um, things change, behaviors change, the sort of uh, codes of conduct that we live by as younger people um, sometimes change, disappear as adults. In some ways, it's bad. In some ways, it's good. It's life. But it was just in my face all the time, and I just kind of, well, the characters are so out. stark and so strong. Um, when did you first see the, 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 the play, Bobby? I saw it at the Barnes series about two years ago. Mm. Um, I went to a reading of it. Uh, Which you were not in. You. I, I was not in. The only person, the only people that were in that reading were Elizabeth and Yule, oh, Elizabeth yeah, Rodriguez and Yule Vasquez. Their names are, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Rodriguez, who yeah. plays uh, Veronica, and Yule Vasquez, who plays Cousin Julio. Um, and I was just blown away. When you see a work show, a reading like that, do you look at that role that you wind up playing? You think, I want that role. Oh, I think that that's a great role, and uh, and I didn't think I would ever going to get to play it. You know, it was because because it was a, it was an, it was it was, for, it was for another actor, and so I just knew I'd probably go see the play a whole bunch of times. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I wished deep down that I could have played that role. That when it, when the opportunity came up, I fought really really hard for it. Um, I had to read it a whole bunch of times. It was amazing, and every time I did, felt better than the last time, and it was a pleasure to read it every time because I love reading the play. Mm. Steven's plays are awesome to read. Now, Chris, were you looking to do a play? Were you looking to do something on Broadway when this came your way? Um, yes and no. I, I'd been offered a couple of plays, and one I got really close to doing. What was that? Um, I don't want to say because then it takes away from the actor, right? Yes. <laughs> Broadway, Broadway diplomatic speak. You know, the, per the person that is in the play should have been in the play, and they were great. Uh, we don't have to do him any special favors. Right. <laughs> and they actually got nominated for Tony. But, uh, so, but that fell apart because of something. And um, I don't know. So I was just reading plays, and 
this was the best thing by far mm. I had seen. And I loved it, A, because it was contemporary. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff I was reading was, uh, you know, period stuff. Revivals and that sort Revivals of thing. Revivals and, you know, I, me as a black man, I, I really don't want to be in anything that happened before the Jackson 5. For sure. <laughs> That's me. Uh, so it was nice to read something contemporary mm -hmm. that appealed to people, not just that go to theater, but people that don't go to theater. Mm -hmm. That's what I liked about it. And yeah, they made me jump through hoops. So anybody that tells you, we wanted Chris Rock all along is lying. <laughs> uh. well, the, thing with, the, thing with both of these, the thing with both of these guys is, is, is they came in there and, and proved it. You know, Bobby's a close friend. He lives two blocks away, a great actor. But when he had to come in and, you know, when you got to come in and read for people you know, it's 10 times harder. Mm. And he came in and proved it every time. Chris came in to audition, and he came in with a script bound in leather with notes all over it. He, you know, he was prepped, and he read great. And then, you know, we went out to dinner, and, and all I got from this guy was like, I'm, I'm, I want to be great. I know what I know that I don't know what I'm getting into, and and I want to do it anyway. And the main thing was I felt like he was like one of us, like he could have been, mm -hmm. except for the fact that that there's a rock at the end of his name. It could have been Chris from from Labyrinth, and so they, you know, they did a lot of showing up, suiting up, sublimation of of ego. And so you so you auditioned. You I auditioned totally. Yeah. So oh, it was yeah. not, oh, we'll get the star for the play, and that's how it goes. It was, it was like a cold audition, too. Like, people were, like, kind of nice, but, you know, they're like, <laughs> I don't want to give you a, my hello can't be but so nice, because I might not have to, you know, <laughs> I want to be able to destroy you <laughs> if I have to. I don't want to feel bad about it. So when I met Steven or I met Anna, it was just, how are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't warm like it is now. It was like, and, and Scott was was Scott in the room? Yes. Yeah, Scott Rudin, the producer. Scott yeah. Rudin was in the He's room. He's always a warm and welcoming yeah, presence. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I had to read. He was in the room, and I I already had a, like a relationship with him, but evidently it wasn't that close because I was reading for the play, right? It's <laughs> 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 like my man Scott Rudin. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got I, this I job. Thought, you know. <laughs> I thought I was in. <laughs> Evidently, I wasn't. Tracy Morgan's waiting in Scott Rudin's car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but now you, it's interesting the dynamic between you two because you have a lot of chemistry on stage. But you are, have been on stage for a long, long time. You know, really great, accomplished theater actor. Your first time really doing a Broadway show. Uh, yeah. Are, are, is he, was he helping you at all? Were you watching oh, him? They or? all helped me. <laughs> all right. So I how, mean, how it's do, everybody. We, we started, how? first day of rehearsal was Chris's birthday. And I only say that because, like, we, we, we bonded immediately, man. And, you know, nobody for a second thought Chris was going to come in with an entourage or anything. I, I think we all expected, because it was a labyrinth play as well, and it was Stephen's work, that we were, and Anna, who comes from the world of ensemble theater, mm -hmm. that it was Your gonna, director. That, yeah, that we were going to just gel. And we did, man. We sung Happy Birthday, and then we, we kicked it off, and we were, we were in our world from jump from Did you one. ever feel behind at all? Did you ever think, whoa, these guys are really good? And oh, I felt behind. I still feel behind sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I mean, really. But Chris, you, you do play. I mean, you perform for thousands I do of perform. people and do plays. I mean, you're, you are playing all the parts in the plays that you do. Yes. I, I mean, so you sure know how to hold stage and hold an audience. Well, you know, it's weird. When we were do doing the rehearsal process, none of my stand-up experience comes into play. Huh. Why? It just doesn't. Because cause you work out stand-up in front of an audience, for one, and just all, you know, 20-some-odd years meant nothing. But once we got into previews mm -hmm. and got in front of an audience, then some of my, you know, I have, like, some advantages. I, my voice. Yeah. Like, this guy will never lose his voice, man. I'm used to doing two hours by myself. Right, right, I'm right. used to playing much bigger places. So the whole projection thing started, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and, and even now I, I'm able to milk laughs out of <laughs> things that weren't there before and you know, 
<laughs> but 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 only when we got to the stage, though. But the issue, though, you, I guess you'd have to watch out for is having a strong comic personality. You are creating a character, and you can't just fall back on the comic stuff that you would. Absolutely. Do. I mean, the great thing is the, the writing is it's it's one of those things you can't mess it up. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm. Hey, I do my best. I give it my all. But this play is written in a way that. 30 actors <laughs> could play my part and be great in it, I believe. Mm. Your, your characters are so specific. I mean, you really, have, you really capture a part of New York, people in New York, that we never see represented on Broadway. We, nev we never see it. You know, we see for, uh, for a play like Other Desert Cities by John Robin Bates, a fine play, but we see rich people living in Palm Springs. And you, you, you've, you've tapped into, a, this is the world you grew up in? These are the people that you know, the people you write about in Jesus Hop the A-Train in this play? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I guess I grew up around a lot of different people. I grew up in, you know, Upper West Side of Manhattan. And uh, I love that play, Other Desert Cities. I love John Robin Bates. Uh, I love Kenny Lonergan, one of my favorite writers. You know, uh, we were talking about Neil Simon before, yep. uh, A.R. Gurney. But it's, that's not my... It's not my thing, you know. It's not what uh, that language is. Not what excites me. It's not what my ear goes to. What is a particular challenge in doing Stevens plays in terms of the language? Just being confident that the words that are coming out, no matter how poetic they may sound, or how or how fast they may sound, mm -hmm. that they're not considered. Mm -hmm. That this is really. This is how they think, and they don't stop to think mm -hmm. about it. This is just who they are. And, you know, I think there could be a mistake made, not just in a play like Stevens, but like a play like Nilo Cruz, for instance, who I've done his plays. His mm -hmm. plays are very poetic. They're very different. But, you know, in the same manner that, you know, we don't have to sell this language. We just have to speak the language. And maybe not always milk the jokes, because one of the things I like about this play is that every joke lands in this play. Every joke is funny. Mm -hmm. But you could see, you know, you're getting bigger and bigger laughs, and you might want to get the laugh a little bit bigger. That's always a, a danger in a very funny play. But I don't think of them as ha ha jokes. No, no, it's no. It's all no. building. Right. It. They're not. Yeah. They're not bada boom. They're all in, you know, like you play football, they're in stride. And it's a very well made play, too. We, I said earlier, it reminded me of the great old. Neil Simon plays in the early 60s where the, the great jokes come out of the character and the situation and always land. And the thing is so tightly, tightly structured. Beautifully structured. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to ask you, you deal with one of the most sacred principles of AA, the sponsor-addict relationship. Has anybody uh, got any flack about that? Because you turn it on its ear that's, uh, that you, you, you what even? Uh, uh, you're the sponsor, and you're not all you should be. Has anybody? We don't want to give the play away, but we want to say that the sponsor is I not not I, an angel. But I, but I Honestly, yeah. nothing but love. Nothing but love. Like I mean, I'm a comedian, and I'm gonna say 70% of comedians are in the program. I'm not in the program. <laughs> I mean, you, you you work in bars. It's just what it is. <laughs> it's like it's, that's comedians are addicted to all sorts of things, and, <laughs> and guys come back. Oh my God! I wish you were there the other night. Just got Jim Norton, you know Jim Norton, the comedian. Yeah. Woo! Just crying in my in my <laughs> in my dressing room, just totally blown away. Colin Quinn, totally blown away. You know, Robin Williams, totally blown. Like all these guys from the, you know, from the program, just totally. Not to out them unless they're they've outed themselves. I, I think yeah, they're, I think pretty they're, they're pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, there's no comedian secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I never saw it as any kind of indictment of the program. I mean, you know. For one thing, you know, you got you got a bunch of people who are who are you know, working class people. They're people who have jobs. They're people who who probably don't go around sharing their feelings a whole lot. Yeah. People that I know who have gotten involved with the program were very close to me. Aren't big feelings sharing people, um, but they're people with a problem. And it's an amazing thing to be able to go to a place where there are other pe a, a community of people who have the same trepidations and fears about sharing, and yet apply themselves to the principles of the program, which is that you do share with mm -hmm. other people. And there's something really beautiful about that that has nothing to do with medication. Um, it's the treating of a disease through talk, to me, is just, it's a beautiful, beautiful idea. And I think Stephen celebrates that in a lot of ways. I think that first scene with Ralph, um, where he shows them going through the steps, you know, did you go to a meeting? Did you pray? Did you journal about it? All these things, these are all important steps for uh, keeping somebody on the right track, and they work on Jackie. 
I'll say time. this about Steven. When, d- yeah. He, you know, he'd, he'd watch rehearsals and, you know, people are going to make mistakes during rehearsals. Any mistake you made about <laughs> something yeah. that had to do with the program, my man got up. <laughs> it's like, yo. Third you, edition. You have to say it like <laughs> this. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is that? Well, because it's, you know, you know, right now in church basements and, and you know, uh, complexes like all around the country, all around the world, people's lives are literally being saved because they're in those dingy rooms. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's important. Um, and even if you were going to write about Scientology, I'm not a huge fan of Scientology. Uh, I wouldn't say it to the degree of litigation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to equate those two things. But, but, <laughs> Back away, boys. <laughs> even, if, even if one was to write something about Scientology, there's no point in writing a piece that just says, Scientology is no good. Yeah. yeah. You right. know, uh, it's, it's, and really, I think with those program things, I think what even the most staunch program person would say is that the program in and of itself is perfect. Yes. The people aren't. And, that comes and nobody in gets into those rooms because they're like, Right. So well adjusted and yeah. sane. Yeah. You know? The psychological dynamic between your two characters is interesting about the program because you're his sponsor, uh, but as the play unfolds, at one point you say, you know, I'm a sober person, but I'm not an angel. And you can see the person who's getting sober just make that sponsor a, a perfect person. And the disappointment that comes when you realize being sober doesn't mean doesn't mean you're perfect. And you don't think you're playing a villain in this play, though, right? I mean, your character does some things that uh, might be considered reprehensible. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but you don't. You don't. No, I wouldn't call him the villain. Uh, he's he's <laughs> he's he's like a he's he's a you know. There's villains that are dastardly, like mm. da 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 da. Then there's like uh, Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive. He's just doing his job. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's my favorite villain of all time. Because he's not really doing, he's, not, he's just doing his job. And sometimes people's jobs are diametrically opposed <laughs> to your life. It's interesting and, how you see that guy's job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to give away the play, but no. of course, of course. He has, you know, my character has things that are his job. Yeah, remember Chris Rock said that. He's doing and his job. <laughs> they, are, they are diet medicine. How many people he's turned on to nutritional beverages in yes. the city? Yes, your, your yes. beverages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask you about sort of a, a, the, the Broadway world that, you know, we're all in and you're, you're new to. Um, and I, I did write a column uh, before the show opened uh, drawing attention to, uh, oh, the fact that the box office wasn't great, and there was some talk about the play going to close early. Chris Rock had dandruff. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And then the reviews come out, and it's great, and it's going to be doing very, very well. Did you pay any attention to any of that negative stuff that was out there? Does it get back to you when you're in the sort of sensitive period of a play in, in, in previews? Uh, I mean, I paid attention to it. Yeah, because you wrote if, to me. If you wake up in the morning and read the New York Post... <laughs> And you see not only that your show's about to close, but but that it's like largely because of you. Yeah, yeah. And and it's like just, you know, we talked about this, but like patently untrue, it gets your attention. <laughs> and then you gotta go to work. And not just your friends, but the guys at the box office, the stagehands, everybody's got that look on their face, and you're thinking like, do they think that it's because of me, blah, 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 blah. Um, it gets your attention. But that said, we all work. All of us work in an arena where we're in the public. We're in the public. You're in the public. You're, we're all in the public. So we got a job, Bobby, Chris, me, where anyone can say whatever they want, and there's nothing really that you could do. What about. was your reaction to that when, when he came to I, I, didn't, I didn't care about, like, writing about the play uh, closing in a week yeah. because I knew that we hadn't opened yet, and I, and I believed in the play, and I think the play is incredible, and, and, and so I wasn't worried about that. The part that, the only, the part that bothered me is that Stephen's a good friend of mine, and then you called him out for being depressed, which I don't think we know that for sure, and I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think you do. Uh, but but the but ha- knowing many people that struggle with depression, my immediate thought was, well, I hope the guy doesn't have anybody in his life who suffers from depression, because I just thought it was mean. I thought it was rude and mean, and I thought anybody who's ever been depressed should be offended by this. And I was offended for him because he's a good friend of mine. And I know him not to be like that, and I was like. 
There's that just more. had nothing to do with the theater. This guy's like, a jerk. No, well, it's also <laughs> like you, that's kind of uh, like your job, right? Your job is to like be partially a be a jerk and <laughs> partially. Yeah. I'm Tommy Lee Jones. Oh. You know, you got to keep people honest in your column, and sometimes you're provocative. But it's like to me, it was like the source. You know, that, that, that's what killed me, the mystery source. Hey, that, it opened with my name. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How did you feel about that? <laughs> you know what? Because in the Broadway world, it, oh, Chris Rock is a box and, and office a star. Weird thing, like, this, this play I didn't write. <laughs> this play I had to audition to be in. This play that I'm so low on the totem pole, you know, in the world of Steven and Scott Rudin and Labyrinth and the public, that my name is at the top of a story really kind of sucks. Uh, <laughs> and if the play were to die, and I always say this, this is this what it means to be a quote unquote star, whatever that is. We win, I lose. <laughs> and this play is a success, and we're all here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But boy, if this thing would have closed last yeah, week, tough. my face would have been right there. My, my man's face was not happy that day. <laughs> I mean, I to talk to him it would have been like, Chris Rock you know. is this guy, and he can't sell, t whatever. That's what, that's what, that's, that's what, what the, the machine came, came down to. And, and the thing to me, though, that, that is, is like, you talk about the Broadway world, it's like, this is the Broadway world, where one week you're dead, the next week you're sitting at a table. The thing I kept thinking about, was like, that's the Broadway world, but there's a world that I grew up in. And the world that I grew up in is like, someone does that to you, and, you know, <laughs> you, you know, it's like, for what makes you think I'm sane enough not to, like, <laughs> kick somebody's ass? I don't mean you, I but I mean anybody. <laughs> All right, well, that said, so having... A, having yeah, it had, is r weird to write something like that about this kind of play. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I would assume the guy that wrote this would punch somebody in the face. <laughs> you know, you want to diss driving Miss Daisy? What's that guy going to do to me? You know, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, the mother... F with the hat, yeah. I'm gonna go after that guy. After that. <laughs> yeah, that made no sense. That's just like, what kind of sense does that make? I, well, I have to say, you you have very uh, very loyal friends because when that when that nasty little article came out, I was inundated by your friends. I mean, taking me apart six ways a Sunday, and then. But we had a civil. We had a civil. Of course, I defy you to find a bad Tupac review of any <laughs> album. <laughs> I want you to. <laughs> but the point is, though, it had a happy ending. Because, and I wanted to ask you this, what was your feeling, having heard all this chatter and all this gossip and all this Broadway stuff, you are, you give that opening night performance and then those reviews start coming through and, the, you know, this play may be the winner of the season. That's just kind of that. It's nice. I'm glad that we're, in a, that this play's on Broadway. Let's, you know, I, I, I don't get to see, you don't get to see plays like this on Broadway. And by, by this, I actually mean really great plays. Mm -hmm. Not just that it's this world, mm -hmm. but that it's a great play. It's a great new American play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I su subscribed to the New York Times for 10 years, and I've read so many stories about the death of the great American play for years now. And we're in a f an unbelievable season. It's a great season. Led by Stephen Girgis, a guy from New York City who's been doing this for a long time. And we deserve to be on Broadway. And I always believed in the play. And you now, now you're the box office draw. Uh, I'm the play's the draw. Yeah. And I'm very proud to be in it. I'm just proud that it is a play, like I said it before, it's a play for everybody. Yeah. It's not just the people that normally go to Broadway. It's not just the people that could afford $300 seats. You know what I mean? And we have this perception out there that things that appeal to lots of people aren't that good. Mm. And this is, defies that. Mm. This is as a, as, you know, it, it's a, you know, it's like a Honeymooners episode. Like anybody can, it allows anybody in. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I just, I'm just so, thank you again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for allowing me to He's be in this great, piece of art. He's the, uh, he's the Neil Simon of his time now. Listen, let's shake hands. Just, <laughs> just so none of my friends come after you later. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. That was big. Tommy, that's right. And, and thank I'm just you doing again. my job, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just doing my job. Thank you again for having the, you know, the, the good, being such a good sport that you showed up. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got it. The play, uh, fellas. The, the play is the mother bleep bleep with a hat, and uh, so, I say this <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, it really Why? is a terrific, terrific play. A very funny play, very moving play, too, by Stephen Adley Girgis. 
Gyrgyz. Gyrgyz. I'm sorry, Stephen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Say the title of the play once, just so we can bleep it. The mother <laughs> with the hat. There <laughs> There's the mother <laughs> with the column right here. Chris Rock giving a terrific, terrific performance in Thank the play. You. And uh, the wonderful, as always, Bobby Cannavale. Congratulations, gentlemen, on this terrific play, and good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Good long, extended run. Thank you. Thank you. you. Think about it? No. What? Was was anyone here? No, why? I just nobody was here. I thought I just answered that. Um what's up with the hat? What hat? That hat right there. That man hat, that ain't my hat, that's right over there. That's not your hat? Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night. <laughs>